We have Peter Booker back on the line with us, insert Human Rights Watch's Emergencies Director. We're going to try to get in as much as we can with you. I know this is a tough line, Peter, before we lose you again. Describe again what you understood yesterday. You said something like 95 bodies? Yes, we found 95 bodies still laying uh, where the battle had taken place yesterday. Many of them were burned beyond recognition uh, from the NATO strike. Um, but at least some of the bodies appear to have been executed in the aftermath of the battle. Um, we also talked to the rebel commander who said that when they found Muammar Gaddafi, um, rebel, different rebel factions started fighting over um, who would take him away. Um, local people and rebels started attacking Gaddafi and pulling at his ear. Um, at some point, he was put on the hood of a vehicle that tried to drive him away, and he fell off. Um, so it must have been quite a uh, okay. um He certainly was alive when he left the scene, um, and there needs to be an investigation into exactly what happened um, shortly thereafter um, before he arrived dead in Misrata. There are reports that he was shot twice in the legs before being shot in the head. Is that what you understand? Yes, he certainly had been wounded already uh, when he was found uh, by the rebel fighters. From the information that we have at the scene of the battle, um, he was not shot further after he was captured. Um, but there certainly needs to be an independent autopsy and an investigation into exactly how he died. Um, many questions remain unanswered about the exact circumstances. It was a French missile uh, in the NATO. Um, the, it was a French missile that hit his convoy. Is that what you understand? Yes, uh, we can confirm it's a French missile, but certainly NATO did intervene uh, and fire missiles. Um, at that time, there were about three separate clusters um, of fighters, um, Gaddafi loyalists, um, attacking this base. Um, and NATO did intervene at about 9.30 yesterday um, to strike those convoys. Um, and then the gun battle still continues for about an hour and a half. Um, it's important to stress that um, there already was an um, armed confrontation between um, this fleeing convoy and the rebels when NATO intervened. So it's not like NATO acted to stop this convoy. Um, it already was engaged with the rebels at that stage. Um here in the United States, uh, it has become a political story. You have the Republican Senator Lindsey Graham, who hailed the death of Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi, but has chastised Congress for its hesitance to assist anti-Gaddafi Libyan rebels, and for uh, he's criticized President Barack Obama's use of U.S. military resources to assist in the airstrikes. He criticized that attack on uh, on Obama. He said, "I'm very disappointed in Congress, um, a member of the Senate Armed Forces." Forces Committee. Congress took an irrational view of the War Powers Act. I guarantee you that a lot of Republicans who wanted the War Power Act invoked would not have asked for it to be invoked if President Obama were not president. To me, national security should be as bipartisan as possible. But Republicans were saying that this was not Obama taking the lead, and they were criticizing him for this, along with Chuck Grassley, the senator. They were saying that we can thank the British and the French. Well, um, I think it's fair to say that at the NATO level, um, the French um, and the British did take the lead. Um, President Obama certainly found himself with, um, within very tight political constraints um, acting in Libya. Um, Human Rights Watch is a neutral organization, but politically and in, in terms of uh, military intervention, we did not endorse this military intervention. But certainly from our conversations with the Obama administration, um, we came away convinced that they did act um, out of humanitarian concerns um, in Libya, um, that they acted to stop a massacre from occurring in Benghazi, and then they found themselves in quite a difficult situation uh, when it became clear that the rebels by their own uh, would not be able to overcome with still a very powerful military. Um, so um, I do think we need to um, have some understanding for those difficult political circumstances um, that the Obama administration found itself in. Peter Booker, can you talk about the killing of Gaddafi? 
can you talk about the video of him being dragged through the street, uh, the bloody images uh, of his head? Well, um, they are very disturbing images, and uh, it's um, certainly important that these events are fully investigated. Um, speaking to a lot of the rebels here, um, they justified how Muammar Gaddafi was treated in terms of the brutality he inflicted um, on his own people, and my response to them was that um, this is a very unfortunate way to uh, start the first chapter of the new Libya. Uh, with this very brutal killing. Um, it, it certainly is already a stain on the record um, of the new Libya, um, and we hope that the circumstances of his death is fully investigated um, that, and that the Transitional Council acts to prevent further acts of vengeance. Um, it's important that justice is done for the last 42 years, but that justice should be done in a courtroom and not by street mob rule. I'm looking at a piece by Horace Campbell, a professor of African studies, um, who said that Gaddafi's killing, with all the hallmarks of a coordinated assassination, marks one more episode uh, in this NATO war in Libya and North Africa, the mil remilitarization of Africa and new deployment of AFRICOM is a new stage of African politics, he says. Your response, Peter Booker. Well, um, that's certainly not our impression on the ground. Uh, it appears that Gaddafi was killed um, not in terms of a coordinated um, attempt to have him assassinated by the rebel leadership, but um, rather a situation that got out of control. Uh, but it is very important that the rebel authorities, now the new government in Libya, act quickly to stop the many armed groups that are operating in Libya. Uh, from carrying out these kind of abuses. Um, I was in the city of Bani Walid a few days ago, uh, just after it fell, and we saw white looting and destruction there as well. Um, there's entire towns like the town of Tawerga, which is a town of black Libyans just south of Mitrata, uh, which are still abandoned because people um, are not allowed to return to their homes because they're accused of being Qaddafi loyalists. Um, and it's that legacy and that challenge that now confronts the new Libyan government. And it's really in the next few months, uh, through their actions, that they will decide the future of this country. Mm. Peter Buckert, um, can you talk about your sense of the government now, the different competing forces of the National Transition Council, and where you think it's headed? Well, the National Transitional Council had um, a lot of influence and power in eastern Libya, where the revolt started. Um, but they're confronted with a much more complex situation in the West. Uh, many of the towns in the West feel that they fought for their own freedom, especially towns like Zintan and Misrata, uh, who suffered very heavy casualties during the war. Um, and they feel they want to dictate their own future. Um, so it will be very difficult for the Transitional Council um, to assert its authority over these different cities, and especially over the fighters from these different cities. Um, they have a real challenge ahead. Um, Mahmoud Jibril, the president of the council, is due to give an address this afternoon in Benghazi um, announcing the fall of Sirt and the beginning of the running of the clock towards elections. Um, so there will be very significant political changes um, in Libya over the next few months. Um, another challenge is the role of the Islamists in the future government. Um, Islamists have played a very important role in the fighting. Um, they're some of the key rebel commanders, including in Tripoli, um, which is headed by a, a man who was rendered um, by the CIA um, to Libya. Um, and we hope that um, those Islamists who, as long as they commit themselves to um, promoting, uh, respecting human rights and plurality of views, uh, will not be sidelined from a future administration and will be given the opportunity um, to show that they are willing to participate in a democratic system. But they, of course, have to, it is important that their behavior is monitored, um, especially when it comes to issues such as women's rights um, and the rights of um, Sufis in Libya. Um, who um, have some religious practices which are frowned upon by some of the Islamist groups. Mm. Uh, there were scenes in Syria of people cheering when they heard about the death of Muammar Gaddafi. 
What do you think this means for the leaders in Syria, Bashar al-Assad, what it means for Yemen, for Saleh? Well, um, certainly it sends a very strong message to um, the leaders in Syria and Yemen that their repressive rule uh, will not be tolerated forever um, and that there is quite a sordid end for them um, if they do not meet the people's demands in terms of human rights and democratic governance. Um, it's clear that after many, many months of military repression in Syria, um, protesters have still not given up. Um, and Bashar al-Assad's clock certainly is ticking, um, and it does appear that the fall of the Gaddafi government, the liberation of Syria, um, has given a boost to the protesters in Yemen um, and in Syria. You know, but I think um, it is a bitter, it is a victory with a bitter aftertaste. Um, the bloodshed which ended this final battle in Syria is certainly to be regretted, and it is a stain um, on what is otherwise. Um, a very remarkable victory by the revolutionaries in Libya. And what this means for Bahrain, uh, the U.S. saying they may be hold off on the latest shipment of weapons to Bahrain, considering uh, what the government is doing to its people, uh, trying doctors and nurses for helping wounded protesters, for example. What message does this send to them and to Saudi Arabia, which is backing them up? Well, Human Rights Watch has been very concerned about the situation in Bahrain for months now, um, the kind of repression and uh, torture in prison. Uh, we've documented several cases of people who've died um, in prison because of maltreatment and these very um, small trials um, of people, of medics who are just carrying out their medical duties, um, certainly are very disturbing. Uh, we've also been concerned for months that the Obama administration when it came to Bahrain, um, in terms of not really um, speaking out strongly about the very serious human rights abuses there. So it is a positive step um, that this latest arms shipment has now been suspended. Um, and I think the message to rulers across the Middle East is the kind of repression that they're used to practice simply will no longer be tolerated and won't be tolerated by their own people but it also won't be tolerated anymore by the international community. And finally, Peter Bookert. And again, I want to tell our viewers and listeners, Peter Bookert is speaking to us uh, from Sirte, uh, from where uh, Muammar Gaddafi was killed. Uh, what this whole last month in Libya means for so-called humanitarian intervention as a strategy? Well, the concept of humanitarian intervention, um, military, the use of military force to protect people, suffered a very sharp blow in Afghanistan and Iraq when the concept was misused by the Bush administration. Um, certainly, I do think that uh, both France and the U.S. Um, did initially intervene um, in Libya with a humanitarian intent, according to my own discussions with Obama um, and Sarkozy um, officials, it was very clear that they were deeply concerned about the civilian population um, of the country and what would happen if Benghazi was attacked. But they found themselves in a very difficult position at the end of the day um, because they were faced with an ineffective rebel force and they had to go far beyond their original mandate. Originally, they had intended to draw a line in the sand around Benghazi to protect, to prevent Gaddafi forces um, from retaking Benghazi. And at the end of the day, they ended up fighting much of the war um, for the rebels uh, from the air um, and carrying out attacks up to the last day, up until this last strike um, that um, ended up with the death of Muammar Gaddafi. And finally, what this means, the fact that Libya has oil, uh, is that why the U.S., France, Britain intervened in Libya in a way that they didn't uh, in other uh, countries? In fact, in Bahrain, only until recently supporting the uh, leadership there, which has been so brutal in repressing its own people, but it's where the U.S. Navy's Fifth Fleet is. Well, I certainly think that um, the countries who led the intervention in Libya uh, will be um, 
receiving serious benefits in terms of preferential treatment for um, oil contracts. I think it's a quite simplistic view um, to say that the West intervened in Libya just because of oil. Um, maybe I'm naive, but um, according to my own discussions with Obama officials and French officials, their interest was much more humanitarian in nature. Um, I think the, the question of the oil is much more important for Libya's future because unlike Afghanistan um, and even Iraq, um, Libya has the resources to rebuild um, the country um, and to build real democratic institutions. Those resources were um, abused in the past. Um, they were sent by corrupt Gaddafi family members and sent all over Africa to shore up support for Gaddafi. But if they are used at home, they certainly could build a much more prosperous and democratic and human rights research society. Peter Booker, we want to thank you for spending this time with us, uh, speaking to us on a strained line, but ever important, as he speaks to us from Sirte, the hometown of Gaddafi, where he was killed yesterday. Uh, Peter Booker is Human Rights Watch's emergencies director. And, of course, we will continue to follow what happens. The burial of Muammar Gaddafi has been put off for an investigation to be done about how he died. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace.